Right, time to hear from Pride and Prejudice star Kira Knightley now. Now, I met up with her on Monday. She'd just flown in um, before attending the premiere on Monday night, and she only spoke to us, and this is what she had to say. It is very nice of you to do this interview because I know you're in the middle of filming Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Two lots of Pirates two, of the yeah, Caribbean. Yeah, two doses, yeah. <laughs> in for the premiere of Pride and Prejudice, and that's what we're talking about today. And it is. It's absolutely excellent. Oh, good. So I think Oscars might be. Well, we'll go on that the far, cards. but it is, it is a lovely film. I'm and, very proud of and it. And what a role to play for an actress. Lizzie Bennett is one yeah. of the great roles to play, isn't it? Were you, did you really want it? When you heard that they were making it, did you really want it? I, I did really want it, but I was terrified at exactly the same time. I mean, I was so terrified that I tried to talk my agents into not setting up a meeting with the director and the really? producer because I was like, just don't send me up for this because this is too terrifying. I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm not ready for it. Please don't, don't make me do this. And they just went, listen, I'm. I'm a huge Jane Austen fan. I've been obsessed particularly by Pride and Prejudice since I was about seven. And they just went, listen, you're obsessed. You are obsessed with the book. You'll be fine. Just go and meet him. But Joe Wright, the director, initially thought when he heard that you were interested in the part that you were perhaps a little too beautiful to play Lizzie Bennet. Yeah. And then he met me and he went, no, she's fine. I don't <laughs> quite know what that means. She's an old scrap, really. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> So which of the painted peacocks is our Mr. Bingham? Well, he's on the right, and on the left is his sister. And the person with the quizzical brow? That is his good friend, Mr. Darcy. <gasps> he looks miserable, poor sir. Miserable he may be, but poor he most certainly is not. Tell me. Ten thousand a year, and he earns half of Derbyshire. The miserable half. <laughs> it's a lovely movie. It looks lovely, and... Does. And it is lovely. And Mr. Darcy is, is lovely. rather lovely. Absolutely. Yes. He's very lovely. Yeah, no, Matthew McFadden is, is he, I think he's the perfect Darcy. He's a proper bloke and he's very vulnerable at yeah. the same time and it's such a romantic combination. Is it good to work with? Yeah, I, he's, he's a lovely, lovely guy. His wife mm. is a very lucky lady. <laughs> also, what a cast. I mean, Brenda mm. Blethyn, this is stupid old Mrs. Bennett, who she yeah. plays brilliantly. She does. And then Donald Sutherland, what yeah. a man, as a Mr. Man. Bennett. Yeah. What was he like to work Amazing. with? Amazing. Legend. I mean, yeah. my, two of my favourite films, one's Mrs. Brown and we had Judy Dench okay. in the film and yeah. the other one's Don't Look Now and that's oh, Donald Sutherland. And, and mm. I mean, to be able to work with these people was just, it was a dream come true. Your mother insists on you marrying Mr. Collins. Yes, I shall never see her again. And Lizzie, from this day onward, you must be a stranger to one of your parents. Who will maintain you when your father is dead? Your mother will never see you again if you do not marry Mr. Collins. And I will never see you again if you do. Mr. Bennett! Thank you, Papa. You're doing very, very well, but everyone tells you the world is your oyster, you're at the top of your game, you're only 20. Where do you see everything going? Or do you not, do you not look ahead, really? No. You just take every yeah. project as it comes and you still enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I don't think you can look ahead in this particular industry. I think you've just got to go with the flow and, and see what happens. And if it all falls apart tomorrow, then I've had a really nice run and so yeah. be it. Yeah, do you know, before I, I met you, I've never met you before, but, I, but certain people I work with have. And they all say, oh, she's so lovely, she's really down to earth. Yeah. And yet you were brought up in a very sort of, you know, your mum was an actress turned playwright, your, yeah. your, your father still is an actor. Yet you do seem very, very grounded, very down to earth, not very lovely. So, oh, not very lovely? No. Oh, oh no. Um, no, nice. I mean, no, but I, I think it's because I, I always saw the reality of the profession. And, mm. and the reality is, is that you have huge lies and uh, highs, mm. not lies, and lies. highs, <laughs> and, yeah, and lies sometimes, <laughs> huge highs and huge lows. Um, and, and that's fine and that's what makes it lovely but you can't expect the highs to last forever you really can't and you do have to make the most of it and enjoy it but know that it is something that's a flash in the pan and that's fine but you've overcome a real problem with reading you, I don't know if you were diagnosed with dyslexia but I, I was it, when I was six um, they found that I couldn't read at all and so I was diagnosed with a dyslexia at about six and a half or something like that but you don't get statemented when you're when you're six they kind of wait mm. so um, it was one of the, it was I'd asked for an agent when I was three and my mum had mm -hmm. said no absolutely not and finally she said okay if you work with me every single day through the summer holidays you come to me with a book work in your on hand your reading, yeah, yeah and a smile in your face um, then at the end of it I'll get you an agent and from then on it was as long as I kept my grades up 
then I was allowed to work during the summer holidays, so the acting was, was like my carrot to do well That's at school. So by the time I was 11, I had a lot of help from my parents, some really amazing teachers and mm -hmm. some great tutors as well, and I'd pretty much overcome it. So it's not a problem now at all. And is acting everything you thought it would be? Because you, you have, you've got the press side that comes with it. I mean, you and oh. Sienna Miller, there's this sort of telescope trained on you all the time. Do you notice it, or do you just no, live with it? I don't. Re I don't read it. I mean, you obviously notice when people are following you around with cameras, yeah. and, and it's weird. I mean, it's really weird. A lot. Most of my friends have nothing to do with this profession, and, and when we go out, it, it's even stranger for them because they're mm. just kind of like, "What's, what's going mm. on?" So, mm. I mean, it, it is. It is really odd. Um, but you still go on buses and things. Though, I do. You? Not at the moment. My face is on them. I can't do it now. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you, ha you can only live your own life. And I'm a big believer in you can't let other people dictate how you live your life. And obviously it, it gets a little bit difficult if I've got a film coming out. Then, then there's a little bit more attention. So I, I kind of have to keep my head down a bit. But I think you, you can only be who you are, really. Yeah. Now, you are single as well. And I did read the other day that you, you would like to find a man that you could have a good chat with, a good laugh with, a good fight with, no, you and know he's what? got I'm, good shoes. Yeah, he's got good shoes, absolutely. But you know what, I'm fine. Not that I'd ever talk about relationships, because it's a policy not to. But yeah, you know, I mean, I'm 20. I'm, mm. I'm having fun. I'm enjoying my work. I've got a beautiful group of friends. And, um, and, and I was just saying possible. it because my husband's, you know, I'm trying to offload him on someone and he's good to have a fight with. Oh, really? And he actually has got very good taste in shoes. Oh, well, excellent. He sounds <laughs> perfect. <laughs> well, <laughs> great. He'd be perfect Thanks. for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to kill me as He'll well. He'll kill you for that one. Yeah. <laughs> if it ain't broke, then why <laughs> try and change it? <laughs> That's certainly a saying that goes a long That's way in Hollywood these TV. days. After a summer of rehashed TV shows, we're now stepping back almost 200 years to a book that has managed to endure the test of time, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Mr. Collins, at your service. The novel was first brought to the big screen in 1949 with Laurence Olivier as the brooding Mr. Darcy. But it was the small screen version ten years ago with Colin Firth stood naked in a bath it really reignited everyone's interest. Now it's back with millions of dollars thrown at it and Kira Knightley in the main role of Elizabeth Bennet. I mean, it's one of the greatest romances ever, so actually it doesn't matter when you set it. The fundamental story is so romantic, it, it, it can be anywhere. Um, I, I think that, you know, it's, it's a story about, or for me, it's a story about growing up, making mistakes and falling in love, and I think that's as relevant today as it was 200 years ago. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those stories that I don't think will ever grow old. I do not have the talent of conversing easily with people. Tonight, then, there'll be the usual star-studded premiere in London, though obviously the real star of the show, Jane Austen herself, won't be putting in an appearance. For her loyal fan base, though, there remains only one real question. Have the filmmakers got that famous Austen irony down to a T, or is this one remake too far? It's a story, a, a, sh a great romantic story, with very, very real people in it, sort of difficult people, and I think it's I, I think it's open to so many interpretations, like any great bit of literature, really. You know, you'd never do Hamlet again. No one would ever tackle it if they were fear, fearful of their predecessors. You think it can be prevented by a young woman of inferior birth? The film has been made by Brit Company Working Title, the same people who gave us Love Actually and Bridget Jones, who clearly have one eye on the Austin-worshipping US and female markets. And with a supporting cast, including Dame Judi Dench, Donald Sutherland and Matthew McFadden as the immortal Mr. Darcy, they're hopeful it'll appeal to lovers of the author's books, both young and old. Steve Hargrave, ITV News. Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, the story of the five very different Bennett sisters and their very different ideas about men, has engrossed generations of readers, including star Keira Knightley, although she didn't exactly read it at first. I had it on book tape when I was about seven and was absolutely obsessed. I used to listen to it all the time and I actually got two doll's houses. I had a small one that was Longbourn and a big one that was Pembley. And then when the TV version came out, I must have been nine or ten, and I, I was again completely obsessed, watched it on a loop for about two years. And then finally when I could actually read the book, I, I did, I read it, and then I reread it, obviously, when, when I got the, the part in the film. Kira's character, Lizzie Bennet, has been much loved by women over the last couple of centuries, so was Kira daunted about playing her? 
Yeah, it was absolutely terrifying. I mean, when I first accepted the role, I had I had women coming over to me and saying, no, you're not Elizabeth Bennet, I am. But equally, you know, I'm, I'm as opinionated as the next and love the book uh, so much that I also thought that I was Elizabeth Bennet, so, you know, they were wrong. <laughs> Another classic character is the infamous Mr. Darcy, played here by Matthew McFadden. As he set bosoms heaving across generations, should all men be more like him in order to attract women? Only by turning them off deeply at the beginning and then, and then them having the thrill of realising they were wrong. I think a woman sometimes likes to have her preconceptions completely confounded. I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a deep, I don't know why it's such a deeply romantic thing that, but it is to have had a strong dislike for somebody and then realise that that dislike is actually because you're madly in love with them. Every woman is looking for a Mr Darcy. Um, you know, and I think it's... With, with Matthew, it, it, is, it is the size of him and the fact that he's so manly and yet so vulnerable at the same time. But, you know, with Darcy as a character, he's brooding and brooding is very sexy. So, yeah, definitely. Although he would be a lot of work, wouldn't he? For your dose of timeless romance, Pride and Prejudice is at the cinemas from this weekend.